In this lesson, we're going to read and write local files. And this is the same sort of thing you might do if you were going to work with a cloud, except we're going to be working locally. One of the things to consider in the future when we start talking about the iCloud is that the user may not always be connected. So in fact, you'll probably have to do a lot of local file operation before doing anything with the iCloud anyway. You always need to check to see if the iCloud is available in your apps. In this app, we're just going to simply write text to the file and then read it back. So we have an area for the user to enter text, and I'm sure they'll be entering in Latin. And we have a write file button, which will write that text. Then we have a read file button, and the results will be displayed in this text view. In our code, we create properties for those controls, and we're going to handle the write file and read file events. And as we've had before, we'll have a property for our NS file manager and our document string that points to our documents directory. In the same way as before, we also get the file manager using the default manager. And we get our document string by searching our path for directories for that documents directory. When the write file is touched, we get a string for the file path by going to the documents directory and appending our text file.txt. And initially when we write it, we're going to write it with a string prefix. So I've created a data buffer using that string prefix. And we also have to indicate, in this case, we're using ASCII encoding. This data buffer can be anything. The file write events and creation events really don't care about the type of data you're writing, but you do have to specify it for the data buffer. So then we take the file manager and we create a file at path and we pass in the string for the file path and then we pass in the data buffer for the contents. So that's our initial file creation, which we've seen before. Now we're going to get a file handle. In this case, we want to get the file handle for writing. So we call NS file handle, file handle for writing at path, and we pass in the file path. If we don't get the handle, we've got a problem and we log the error and get out of here. But assuming that we actually did get the handle, we move on and we're going to append the rest of the data. Remember, we initially just wrote prefix. So we create a mutable data object and we call the data with data parameter, passing in the text that the user has written. We cite that the encoding is ASCII. We use our file handle to seek to the end of the file. I've commented out another approach, which calls seek to file offset, which will pass in a byte offset into the file. In this case, it would be 10 bytes into the file, and that would be essentially the pointer where the operation that follows would go from. That next operation is going to be write data. So in this case, we've seeked to the end of the file, and we're just going to write the data to that end. So essentially, we're just appending whatever the user has entered. And we pass in that data object that we created from the text. And then we close the file. And that's the time the file will actually be saved. So the file does have to be closed in order to be saved. When our read file button is touched, we again get our file path, and we get a data buffer object, and we also get a file handle. And in this case, we're getting a file handle for reading at the path as opposed to writing. If that file handle is nil, we've got a problem and we log it and we move on. But if the file path is not, we take our data buffer and we fill it by reading data to the end of the file. So this reads the entire file. We could instead just read a data of length. And the commented out method I have just reads five bytes worth of the file. So depending on what you're doing, whether you want to read the entire file or if it's a binary and you're reading objects out of it that you know the length of, you can use the appropriate method. And you close the file and that cleans up memory. Then we'll turn it into a string. So we create ourselves a data string, initializing it with the data buffer. And we wrote it as ASCII encoded. So of course we want to read it as ASCII encoded. And finally, we set our read text label to that data string. So let's see if that works as expected. Here's our form with our text to write, and we'll write the file, and then we'll read it. And you can see we have the prefix to begin with, and then the Latin that the user entered after that. So all is well.